Quick fire top tips, everything you need to know about using magic masks within DaVinci Resolve 18 Studio, sponsored by NVIDIA. Yes, that's Studio, that's the paid version, they're not available at all within the free version. You can use them for selective color grading or cutting things out of your scene, whether it's for simple stuff like putting text behind things or more creative compositions. Now they work by utilizing the DaVinci Resolve AI Neural Engine. To get the best performance in Magic Masks, you're going to need a powerful graphics card like those available from NVIDIA. Everything you're seeing in this video, by the way, is being run on my very own NVIDIA RTX 4080. All of the latest 40 series of graphics cards by NVIDIA have dedicated AI cores called Tensor Cores, which are designed specifically to accelerate AI tasks, just like Magic Masks, in creative applications like DaVinci Resolve, which means faster Magic Masks, less dropped frames, access to things like super scaling and speed warps in real time, and faster rendering speeds. Winner! And as Blackmagic update DaVinci Resolve, so do NVIDIA update their graphics card drivers with their dedicated NVIDIA Studio drivers to ensure that Resolve is always running its smoothest and fastest. Click the link down below to find out more. Now there are two versions of Magic Masks within DaVinci Resolve. There's the Color Page version, which is kind of the OG, that one came first, and then there's the Fusion version as well. They work pretty much in the same way, but there isn't an important distinction between the two. The Color Page version is generally a fair bit quicker and allows for obvious color grading. There's also a person mode, which we'll talk about in a moment, but the color page version is kind of temporary. If you jump back onto the edit page and transform, you will lose your track. While the fusion version is slower, but it's more permanent and it allows for transforms and other effects to occur after you've done your track without losing that track. So which one do you choose depends on exactly what you're doing. So let's talk about the color page version first and we're going to start off with a real quick overview. So here we are on the edit page and I've got two clips set up. We're going to do two real quick examples. So the first things first, give your footage a click and then jump directly over to the color page. Then from this center menu right here, you want to select this icon to activate the magic masks controls down here. Now, the first thing you're going to want to know is this icon. This will toggle on your mask overlay, which makes it much easier to see what's actually being selected. So I'm just going to toggle that on real quick. Then underneath your preview window, just make sure that you are on your qualifier. So all we need to do now is find the point where we want to start our track. So the thing here, just to bear in mind, is you want your subject at its most obvious. You know, when it's in full frame, it's not being cut off. From this point, all you then need to do is to squiggle on the thing you want to track. So I'm going to do a rough little line there. And actually, it's highlighted my entire guy in red. If it had missed his head, for example, I'd just do another little line to pick up his head and maybe down here. And you can do as many little squiggles as you like. Now, how long your squiggle should be has kind of been up for debate. I've always done a fairly long squiggle, while others suggest several smaller squiggles. It kind of depends on the scene, so do a squiggle on the most obvious thing first, see what's been selected, and then go from there. So now that we know it's been picked up, we then hit this icon here to do the track forwards and backwards. So we'll give that a click, and it's just going to go through the entire clip tracking the thing we asked it to track. As you can see, this is running really quick, 50 frames per second, thanks to that NVIDIA GPU. Thanks NVIDIA. And that is pretty much your magic mask done. You can click on this icon here to go back to the original frame where you can see your little dashes. You can also click and then move them around if you need to just reposition them ever so slightly. You will then need to do your retracking afterwards. Let's just put that back and we'll retrack that in a moment. You can delete any strokes by simply clicking on the little bin icons down here to get rid of them. You can also invert your mask by clicking on this icon to make the thing that was tracked to be the only thing that isn't being tracked, like so. And if you hold the Alt or Option key, if you're on a Mac, you can then do red little squiggles and that will tell Resolve the things which you don't want to be tracked. Now the keen eyes of you will have noticed there is a faster and a better option to select from. This one's relatively obvious, but it's worth mentioning. Faster is faster, while better is well, it's better, but it also means it's slower. In this next example, I've identified my subject, I've got my overlay on, but I haven't yet done the track. This is how my mask would look set on faster, whereas if I set it to better, 
you can see we just get a slightly more refined edge and it just looks a little bit nicer. We can also then refine that edge a little bit more by using these controls down here. Now we're not going to go through all of them, I'm just going to show you the ones which I use the most. Blur radius, clean black and then clean white. So the blur radius will just blur that edge. So the further it goes up, you can see that edge is being blurred. So you can just take off the, the harshness of the edge by adding a little bit of a blur radius. The clean black, imagine the outside areas with the areas which aren't being tracked. That's the black area that will bring the black area in. And the clean white, white is referring to the area which is being tracked, that will bring that out. So what you can do is just use the clean white and the clean black just to refine your edge maybe add a little bit of blur on there get it looking exactly as you want it and then once you're happy we can just hit track and it will go through and track it all the way through like so so once your magic mask is complete what's next well if we turn off our overlay then we can do basically anything on the color page we want to but it will only apply to the thing which has been tracked so I can change the offset here, mess with the gain, gamma, lift, change the temperature, contrast, maybe knock the saturation down, do all of the usual stuff within our color wheels, but it's only going to be on the thing within our mask. If we were to go and invert it, it would obviously invert the entire thing, so now I look normal and everything else has those grades applied. Now this also works for effects. So on the color page, let's go to the effects area, top right hand corner, and let's just grab the mosaic blur for this example and we're gonna drop that on the node. And now I'm nicely blurred out, looking like a criminal, just like that. Let's get rid of that. If you need to make the background transparent, so you do want to cut things out on the color page, simply right click anywhere within the nodes, come down to add alpha output, and that will make this little blue circle down here appear. Grab the blue box from your node, drag it down, release, and there we go. Now we've cut me out. Now I've already put a coloured background underneath so you can actually see what's going on, but there we go, we've used magic masks to cut me out quite nicely. Now one last quick tip from here, if you are doing this sort of thing, I always like to add a drop shadow because it just adds a bit of depth, makes it look a little bit nicer. So once again from the effects area, grab a drop shadow, we'll drop that on the line like so. Then what we actually need to do is grab your little dotted line, so go blue to blue, and then blue to blue once again. Once again, we've got our magic mask cut out, but now we have a drop shadow on there. We can just change the strength, change the angle, hit play, and there we go. Way. So that's the basics of magic masks. Let's just jump in once again, and we're gonna do a live demo with a slightly more complicated situation. We're gonna do something with horses where they're crossing over each other to show how you would actually use magic mask in a slightly more realistic example. We're trying to track this white horse here. Now he's gonna move around between a few different horses, he's gonna be completely covered, and then he's gonna come back. So it's not a simple track. But same thing as before, we wanna find the point where he's most obvious. So we're gonna go with about there, probably. And we'll just give him a bit of a highlight, like so, and that's picked him up pretty well. And then we're just gonna do our first track. Now, if we look from the beginning, all of this has worked pretty well. Then this other horse gets picked up about here. What you want to do is find the first frame where it starts to go a bit wrong. So kind of about here. Then we're gonna do some negative ones, so holding alt, just a bit of a squiggle on there to say don't grab this horse. We don't need to track backwards because we've already done that. So from this point forwards, we're just gonna track forwards instead, like so. And then what I'll do here is just keep working through to build up the full track. There's a bit missed there, but I'm not too bothered about that. We'll wait for the horse's head to sort of pop out a bit and we'll add him to our track. Once again, we'll go forward a bit. Another leg that's sort of missed here. We'll track that. That sort of picked it up there and it sort of got him on the way back as well. So that makes my life easier. So when he comes back into show, we'll grab there, there. Make sure not, it's not being picked up. Off we go. And there we go. And that's not perfect. You may want to spend a little bit more time on it, but that's how you'd get Magic Masks to work in a much more complicated, tricky sort of environment. Horses for courses, right. On the color page, as I mentioned earlier, there are two versions. There's an objects version and there's a people version. You pick them by selecting one of these two icons here. 
Now, personally, even if I'm tracking a person, I'll generally use the object version because it generally, in my experience, gives me a better, cleaner result, which is actually the complete opposite to what the manual suggests. But as mentioned, I've always just had better results that way, so it's kind of what I do. So why does the person version exist? Well, the person version gives you the option to track individual elements of a person, like their arms, their face, their hair, and their body. If you need to do that for some selective color grading, person mode is the way to go. But for everything else, generally, I stick to object. Now, really quickly, before we start talking about fusion, you can also use magic masks to track multiple things at once. So two doggos here. If I want to apply the same sort of color grades to both of them, what I can actually do is just do one little stroke on that doggo, one little stroke on that doggo, then we track and we're actually tracking both of them within the same magic mask, within the same node. So if we turn on the overlay, you can see they're both selected. So then if we do some grading, they're both being graded like so. Alternatively, what we can do is we can do this one and then we track and then we can do whatever grades we want to that one. And then we would just right click, add a new serial node to add a second node. And on this second node, we'd track this doggo with a separate magic mask do what we want to this one and we've got two separate ones. You could also do loads of things with fancy nodes like parallel nodes and all that sort of stuff, but we're not going to jump into that for this video. Now, once again, as mentioned earlier, if you then do a transform on the edit page or whatever, you will lose that track, but you haven't actually lost it. It's just got rid of the preview. If you go to render, it will automatically do that retrack for you. So your end results should be fine, but obviously it's quite annoying because you can't actually see what you're trying to do. And that's when the Fusion version comes into play. The big benefit of the Fusion version is it's kind of more permanent. You're less likely to lose that preview. You can jump onto the edit page, do all your transforms, apply loads of effects, and you're going to be good to go. It also means, of course, you've got all of the Fusion tools to mess around with as well. So let's jump into Fusion and I'll show you really quickly how it works. It's fundamentally the same, it just looks slightly different. So to use the Fusion version, I'm going to right click on my footage and we're going to open in the Fusion page or we could just jump directly into Fusion, but I prefer to do it that way. And then you can see we've got our nodes down here. If I hold Shift and hit Space to bring up my Select Tool search, we're just going to find Magic Mask and then click Add. I'm going to hold shift and then drag it onto the line until the line goes yellow and blue, just to link that up. And if we have a look in the inspector, we have essentially the same controls. They just look slightly different, but you do the same thing. You find the point within your clip where you want to start the track. So we can go, go with about there. Then we'll do our little squiggles on the screen like so. The default on the Fusion page isn't obviously for color grading. It's not just tracking. So it will automatically get rid of that background for you, as you can see here. We have the same faster and better options down here, and we have the same forwards and back track. So we're just going to give that a click and it's just going to go through and track. Down here, you can see my frames are 6.19 frames per second. As mentioned, the Fusion version is much, much slower than the Color Page version. I don't necessarily know why, but it just is. So it will take longer to render, but as mentioned, it is more permanent. Once it's finished, you can go back to your main frame with your squiggles, the reference frame, by clicking on this icon here. And if we jump over to the mat tab, we've got some very similar controls to actually finesse the mat. So we've got blur, erode and dilate, which is like your shrink and your grow, gamma, solids, all sorts of stuff within there. Now, as mentioned, the cool thing with magic masks on the fusion page, if I was to grab a transform node, put it down here, we could do whatever we like. And that will, of course, stay as it is. And if we jump over to the edit page, do the same thing. We can change the angle. We can zoom this in. We can transition it. We can apply effects to it. We can do whatever we like. And that magic mask won't need to be retracked. And that's it. Magic masks. Thanks to NVIDIA for sponsoring this video. Make sure to check the description to find out a little bit more. Until next time, take it easy. See you later.